Welcome back to the Sports Source. The segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. For more than a century, East Tennessee's best top-rated contractors have turned to A.G. Hines Company for building materials. You know who else has? The smartest do-it-yourselfers in town. They go right to Hines Street in downtown Knoxville. They go in there and they see Gordon Hines. They go in there and they see his son. They, the, the sons, they see the whole crew. Uh, this company, you don't get to be around for a century, four generations. The number of companies in this, con in this country that are four generations old, it is tiny. You can fit it on a pinhead. A.G. Hines Company is one of those companies because they are just so supremely good at what they do. Prices, all the best materials, and also just quality, quality people. They got all the answers for you. If you got a do-it-yourself project, they can help you get through it. A.G. Hines Company, you can also find them at aghines.com online. Okay. Guys, we're going to do a mid-month state of the team report uh, next week, and then we'll do it in mid-February, and then we'll do one, you know, around the tournament, maybe at the end of the tournament. But we're going to kind of who's doing what so far. But this week I want to do something quicker. It's going to be very quick since we went over in that last segment. I just want to ask you, who's the most valuable guy on this team? And that's question number one. Question number two, and we can go ahead and put up some numbers here. Uh, you folks at home, if you can get your micro, my, your uh, – your magnifying glass and check out the numbers you can. But uh, those are all the double-digit guys, the guys who played double-digit minutes so far. So some guys have been cut off that list. Uh, who's the most valuable is question one. Question two, who's the most consistent that you can look at night after night, this guy brings X. You know I can trust him to do this. Most valuable, most consistent. And if it's the same guy, so be it. But I'll start down there with Chuck. Who's most valuable on this team? Well, I think we saw yesterday John Fulkerson, that, that you need him to be healthy and you need him to be playing well. And, you know, he, he's the guy that scored 24 points against Arizona and also got 10 rebounds. He's had a career game at Kentucky. He gives you what you're lacking a lot, and that's an inside presence and can help you win and is a sixth-year senior. So, to me, he, but he just has to be healthy. Okay. Most valuable, Jimmy? Uh, Santiago Bescovi. Uh, I think he has been, and he would fit both of those to me, but he's been yeah. the most valuable I think you can count on him from night in to night out. He's had games where he's led him in scoring. He's had games where he's led him in assists and in rebounds and in steals. I, I, I have been impressed with his all-around game. That's where I would go on both those. Sir, I, I don't know about most valuable, most consistent. Well, most, cons most definitely. Most Without consistent. You've played 12 games. I've played 14 games. There's only one player on the team in 12 games has scored at least 10 points. That's Viscovi. Well, and you can also – I just look at him and I know what he's going to bring in tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas some of these guys, is he going to show up tonight? Is he going to be benched for three minutes? I, I don't know what he's going to do. Isaiah, most valuable, most consistent, where are you going? I like Santi, too. Earlier in the season, I would have said Chandler, but uh, mm -hmm. the most valuable is kind of – you know, the most consistent is kind of the most valuable to me. Uh, and you don't have those dead nights. He never looks scared. He's always confident yeah. no matter how much he misses. So he exudes <laughs> the confidence we need, and, and he just plays hard. So I, I like him for both. Uh, I agree with that most consistency with coaches and, and it's so much about consistency is such a value add. Um, but I think Kennedy Chandler is the guy that if you take off that court, uh, his effect on making the game easier for Viscovi, if Viscovi has to become a, a primary ball handler, not as good. And so Kennedy Chandler makes everybody better. He gets these inside spoon feeds for dunks. Um, his tempo on defense. I think Kennedy Chandler is still your most valuable player, but Viscovi is right there nipping him in the butt. Uh, Chandler had uh, kind of disappeared. I don't want to say disappeared from a scoring perspective. He had the huge day against Colorado where I, you know, went gaga over it. What a performance. My gosh, this guy looks so much better than any of these other one and doneers you've had here. And Isaiah at the time off air was like, you know, just tap the brakes there. Basically, cool off. He, they didn't do anything to defend him specifically in that game. He didn't have another great game until yesterday in terms of points-wise, and there's more to his game than just scoring. But he did have a silent stretch there where he hadn't been as good as he looked against Colorado. What changed yesterday, or, or did you see something that was missing, or was it just, you know, product of the game? Some nights it's just not your night. But he had four or five games there where it was not up to, I think, what people – Against Colorado, and again last night, you could look at it and say, that's a future NBA player. He had some games in between where I don't think people were going, is he going to leave in March? I, I think he's hit the freshman wall, of, uh, which is amplified by Coach Barnes and his style of coaching point guards. Uh, I saw it on the, on the bench 
when Barnes was all over him after a turnover and you saw Josiah Jordan James uh, pull Barnes aside like, Coach, I got him, Coach, I got him. That tells me that within the locker room, within practice, the guys feel as though Barnes is riding um, Kennedy, and I think that's part of it. I think he's, he's just dealing with a long that if he turns it over, he's coming out, uh, but he's going to get a better chan another chance, and I think that's just part of his growing pains. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I think he's got to develop the mid-range shot. I said it after the game where he had the big game in Colorado, mm -hmm. and he drove to the paint all the time where he shot the three. The scouting report looks like either he's shooting the three or he's going all the way to the basket. Now, he might dish it when he gets there, but, I mean, it's, he's got some shots in between there. Texas Tech played it differently. The bigs were up, and then he couldn't get all the way to the rim. So he's, he's just going to have to adjust his game a little bit. He's still really good. But it's, at times, you know, he don't seem like he's playing the hardest. You know, so that's why I didn't say MVP or most consistent. But that's a freshman thing, too, so he'll, he'll figure it out. But everybody sees you, and they know exactly what you want to do in the SEC. So you might as well get used to it and get ready to make the adjustment because it's coming. All right, very good. Uh, when we come back, I'm just keeping the basketball guys out here for a second. Then I'll let the Chuck and Jimmy will come back with a couple of our football analysts. We'll talk analytics with them. But I want to talk to these two. Uh, college basketball has clearly changed. We talked about this two or three years ago that, you know, everybody else is starting to jack up these three. Should Tennessee get on that train? It makes sense. It's the smart way to play. But is it good for basketball? <laughs> we'll discuss that. Come on back on the Sports Source.